ABV Nation, what's going on? It's Patrick here at VectorVest bringing you a brand new GameStop update. They just announced when their next quarterly earnings will be, so we're going to be taking a look at the expectations, talk about some potential speculation on what type of announcements they could make during this call. Also, we'll be looking at the chart to make sure we get an idea of what's going on there as well. So, if you're ready to get prepared for the next earnings report, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and let's dive right into it. All right, welcome back. So before we jump into the preview, I just want to remind everybody we do have trading for charity going on. It's a live event every Tuesday and Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, found right here on the VectorVest YouTube channel, where I'm doing some live trading, answering your questions, helping you become better, stronger investors, and also at the same time raising money for both Levine's Children's Hospital and Toys for Tots. So if you want to come support the great cause of trading for charity, make sure to come hang out with me every Tuesday and Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Also, you have to be there live to get an opportunity to win some amazing prizes as well. So see you guys there. Now let's jump into the preview here today. Right now, we just got the announcement a few days ago that GameStop has officially released its Q3 earnings date, their earnings call, and that will be on Wednesday, December 8th of 2021. So with that, let's go ahead, take a look at some of the expectations, get an idea of what other traders or analysts out there are thinking, and then we'll get into some speculation. And as always, we'll finish off taking a look at the chart and see what that tells us, see if there's any clues that we can pick up on from there as well. So jumping into the estimates right here found on Yahoo Finance. Right now, quarter three or current quarter that ended in October, the estimate right now, or the average estimate, is negative 52 cents. But going forward, the next quarter, coming the beginning of January, they expect a $1.06 earnings per share. So turning positive for that quarter here. Definitely like to see that. Now, as we can see, over the last few weeks, or over the last few months even, we have had some earnings revisions where they've been actually revised downward. 90 days ago, they were expected at 48 cent, negative 48 cent. Now they're expected at negative 52 cent. But this just goes to show why it's so important if that you're not only just buying stock, but if you're a GameStop holder, also to support your local stores by joining their Power Up Rewards program. And also, if you're going to look for electronics, always look at GameStop first because as far as I've seen so far, their prices tend to beat most other competitors out there, if not the best every single time. So make sure that you're buying, holding, and supporting your local GameStop because that helps the bottom line, which that helps your favorite stock out there. All right, so we see that that's the estimates right now. 52 cents or negative 52 cents coming up at the beginning of December. And one interesting article that I found was written by an author of Mark Hake. Great article here from Investor Place and talking about his expectations for Q3 earnings call. And part of it goes into getting in really to the financial statement itself. So one of the things that he points out here, in fiscal second quarter results as of September 8th, sales rose 1.183 billion from 942 million the previous year. So that equates to a significant increase year over year. And that's what you wanna see. You wanna see the company improving and getting stronger and having better sales. Coming down a little bit more, one of the things he tends to focus on is FCF or free cash flow. And free cash flow is not only just taking into account the inflows and outflows every quarter, but also the amount that they can write off for their adjusted earnings per share as well. And as he states, if we can see a potential positive run in earnings, beating what their expectations are, that could turn GameStop into a positive free cash flow company once sales are rising. Once again, highlighting why we need to go out and support our local store and just buying GameStop shares isn't enough. And that is a huge momentum driver because if a company turns positive on their cash flows, then that will catch some of the fundamental investors out there that are investing for the long term, catch their eye and potentially bring them in as GameStop investors. So as we scroll down, he talks about the fact that as of mid-November, the stock was trading around 206, which is a 40% increase over the last three months and is now five times higher than it was back in February at around $40 a share. 
And as we scroll down to take a look at some of his extra thoughts here, we talked about this a moment ago, but their sales estimates are set for $1.19 billion this quarter compared to just over a billion last year. And that represents a gain of 18.5% over the past year, which is what you want to see your company doing, especially if you're invested in it. And as he mentions, as we talked about a second ago, with just a slight increase, sales will help turn the corner of the company, which analysts tend to downplay. And that is why GameStop could be a sleeper, even at the current ranges that it's trading at right now. So as we scroll down a little bit more, coming into what the analysts are expecting, and one of the things we just mentioned, the issue with analysts, they don't see things the way the company does, and the business is operating its finances and closing stores, reducing inventory, and generally attempting to turn things around, but the market believes them so far. That's why we're seeing GameStop trading at around $200 a share currently. And it will look into the future and discount that expected turnaround. So once again, analysts are downplaying the potential turnaround where from what we've seen over the course of the last 11 months through all the updates that we've done here on the VectorVest YouTube channel, we've seen that they are working diligently, making the company more efficient and working on some things that could potentially be game changers. So let's get into the speculation, talk about that of the potential game changers and what I really want to hear during their Q3 earnings call. So as we mentioned before, GameStop and Loopring, there's been uh, theories or there's been speculation about partnerships with it. As you can find here on GMEDD, great website. Shout out to these guys for doing a lot of great research. And I love reading their insight about GameStop as well. And one of the things they published a couple of weeks ago, we're talking about some of the hirings that GameStop has been posting and how fast those have been getting filled but also about potential leaks from some of the coding from an organization called Loopring, which builds infrastructure on the layer two of Ethereum network. And just a quote from here, on Friday, GMEDD published clues that Loopring has the technology that GameStop would require to bridge a traditional e-commerce and blockchain and engineer the revolution to gaming. The following Monday, GMEDD discovered and shared GameStop's latest NFT job listings, which detailed interest in Web 3.0, blockchain gaming, and even an NFT marketplace. So that brings us to our expectations or the speculation that I want to hear during the earnings announcement. So as we've talked about previously, Loopring has stated that they have a big announcement with their partnership, which they haven't announced who it is yet, coming in Q4 of this year. Well, Q4 is coming to an end. We have one more month coming up for the month of December. So some sort of announcement should be coming out relatively soon. And as we've talked about, there has been some leaks about how GameStop is that big partner, but they haven't officially announced it yet. And if that comes during their earnings call, that would be that catalyst that could potentially make GME or GameStop shoot off to the moon. We already know there's a huge short interest on the stock. 15% roughly is the official reported number. Some speculate it could be a lot higher than that. And if the speculation is true, that could really amp up the run that we see if they have a positive earnings call plus a huge announcement like an NFT marketplace or some sort of blockchain gaming network that they have on the GameStop blockchain. And the last thing I'd like to see, I know this is a long shot, but as it's been speculated about throughout the community over the last few months, I would love to hear some sort of an NFT dividend. That way it helps support not only the GameStop, it shows that they're utilizing that technology for their shareholders, giving shareholders value, which could cause havoc for anybody short on GameStop and therefore it could make GameStop a household name. So this Q3 earnings call is definitely going to be a fun one to listen to, to see if there's any changes, see if we may get a guest appearance by Ryan Cohen himself, and also to find out if we get any sort of clues on what they've been up to over the last 11 months. They've been tight-lipped and hopefully we'll have some sort of insight coming up very, very shortly. All right, so with that, let's go ahead, jump into the graph, take a look at that and see if we can identify any sort of trends that can help us get some clues into what could potentially be coming from their Q3 earnings announcement. So we'll get out of here. All right, so jumping into the chart, what we have here is a weekly candle one year look back on GameStop where I have the price shown in candlesticks, a three and the eight exponential moving average, which shows great short-term entries and exits. 
Also below there, the MACD, Stochastics, which shows overbought and oversold territory, and then volume as always at the bottom. So as we can see, we still have that wicked wedge we've been talking about still on here, where we've been hitting a pattern of lower highs, but also higher lows showing consolidation. And as we brought to you guys a few weeks ago, we did break out of that consolidation about four weeks ago and waiting to see a pop. So far, we've been hitting resistance on the short term, right around 2.30 a share. Every time we try to get above that here, we came back down, retested the upper part of that consolidation, bounced off once again, hit right at that 2.30 mark, pulled back last week, which last week we had the holiday shortened week, also a holiday shortened trading day on Friday. The markets had quite a bit of a bloodbath because of the new uh, COVID variant, and that seemed to hamper the overall market, not just GameStop. So we've seen a pullback once again to that point. And now, potentially starting to see a rise here as of today, Monday, and waiting to see how the rest of this week plays out if we head back towards that 230 level. Looking at MACD, MACD has been something that's been a great indicator to focus on over the course of the last year. And looking at the MACD histogram, we did turn positive when we broke out of that consolidation and have been positive with the MACD ever since. For the last four weeks in a row, we have seen a positive MACD. Well, as history tends to point out, that is a very strong sign on a weekly chart when looking at GameStop. And then coming down to Stochastics, which shows overbought and oversold scenarios. As we can see, we've been steadily rising out of those oversold territories from around the end of August coming into the beginning of September. And so far, we still have more upside potential based off of what the Stochastics is telling us. And then finally, looking at volume, analyzing volume, because as we always say, volume is conviction here at VectorVest. And when we're looking at volume, volume has been relatively light. And some sort of big news or big announcement coming from their Q3 earnings call could definitely see that volume start to flood back in, which would be a very strong sign that GameStop has a lot more room to go. So hopefully you enjoyed today's update. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And once again, make sure to come hang out every Tuesday and Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern as we raise money for both Levine's Children's Hospital, also Toys for Tots. So until next time, take care, adios, toodles.